Today we're going to look at the notion of an exact differential equation and then we're going to push that idea into the realm of second order differential equations. Whereas when you're taking a differential equations class you generally only learn about first order exact differential equations. Okay, so let's recall the definition. So a uh, differential equation P plus Q times Y prime equals zero, where both of these functions are of X and Y is called exact. If the partial of P with respect to Y is the same thing as the partial of Q with respect to X. Then if this is satisfied, then there is something called a potential function psi such that if you take the partial with respect to X of this function, you get P. And if you take the partial with respect to Y of this function, you get Q. And furthermore, that gives you an implicit solution to our differential equation defined by Psi of XY equals C. I say that's an implicit solution because we may not easily be able to solve this for Y. Okay, so let's look at an example. We've got x over root x squared plus y squared plus y over root x squared plus y squared times y prime equals zero. So let's first check that this is exact. So note that this will be our function p, whereas this will be our function q. So let's take the partial of p with respect to y. But we'll use the chain rule here, keeping in mind that we've got like a negative half power exponent in the denominator around this x squared plus y squared. So in the end, that'll give you a minus xy times x squared plus y squared to the three halves. Okay, so again, I just used the chain rule. So taking the derivative of y squared is 2y but then we've got this minus half that comes out to cancel the two down to a one and give you a minus sign there. But let's notice that that is exactly the same thing as the partial of Q with respect to X, which I think is pretty clear just because of the symmetry built into these functions. Okay, so now that we've checked that it's exact, let's go ahead and find a solution. So we need to look at this equation partial of psi with respect to x equals x over root x squared plus y squared and just see where that takes us. Keeping in mind that eventually we'll impose this condition that the derivative with respect to y is q. Okay, so let's take the antiderivative with respect to x. So let's see, we could use a simple u substitution here if we wanted to. We could say u is the square root, or sorry, not the square root, but just x squared plus y squared. And then notice half du will be this x times dx term, which would show up if we were doing the antiderivative. So in the end, taking this antiderivative, we'll see that psi, which is a function of xy, is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. But note that we just took the antiderivative with respect to x. So that means if we were to take the derivative to get back here, that derivative would cancel out everything that's a function of y because it's with respect to x. So I'm gonna add on a function which I'll call g of y. That's like our constant of integration in this case. So now let's take the derivative of this with respect to y and then impose the condition that that should be equal to our function q. So the derivative of this bit with respect to y will give us y over root x squared plus y squared and then we have plus g prime of y. And like I said, this needs to be equal to simply y over x squared plus y squared as that's our function q. But notice that it's essentially done. All we see here is that this g prime of y must in fact be equal to zero. And also that means that we have our constant, or sorry, that we have our potential function here. This psi is simply equal to root x squared plus y squared. And you might say, well, if g prime is zero, then g could be a constant. So really it could be that plus a constant, but let's notice that well, our implicit solution has a constant in it already, so we don't need to overload ourselves with two different types of constants as they could just be combined together into one. Okay, so that means we do have a fairly simple solution to this, which is given by 
square root of x squared plus y squared equals some constant c. And then note that if you were to solve this for y, you would have to take a square root and you would have to make a decision of the positive branch or the negative branch of the square root. And that's really gonna depend on the initial condition that you have. But we don't have an initial condition, so the, this is how we'll leave it. Okay, so let's play around pushing this idea of an exact differential equation into the realm of second order DEs. So now let's, like I said before, go towards an exact second order differential equation, which is gonna be built off of an exact first order differential equation. So what we'll do is simply start here and take the derivative with respect to x. So let's see, that's gonna give us the derivative with respect to x of p of xy plus the derivative with respect to x of q of xy times y prime equals zero. But notice that these are total derivatives with respect to x, and that's because we want to get a second order differential equation, which means we want a y prime in there. So that means when we take the derivative of p of xy, we'll in fact have to use the chain rule, the multivariable chain rule. And the same thing for q of xy. So let's recall a little tree diagram for p and q of how to do that. So here we'll have p at the top, that depends on x and it depends on y, but then y also depends on x. So if we're taking the derivative with respect to x, we have to go from the top of the tree to the bottom via all paths, which means we have to go through that partial with respect to y path. And then the same thing is happening with q. So that'll go off to x and y, but then y depends on x. So in the end, that's gonna give us a pretty complicated looking equation. So note that we'll have the partial of p with respect to x plus the partial of p with respect to y times, well, the derivative of y with respect to x, but we could rewrite that as y prime. Okay, so that's from following these two paths down here from the top to the bottom. And then the same thing will go on here. So here we'll have the partial of q with respect to x plus the partial of q with respect to y times y prime, and that's all multiplied by y prime, and then plus q of xy times y double prime, where I used the product rule there. And now, as you can see, things are getting really complicated here. So by the exactness of our original differential equation, well, what do we know? Well, we in fact know that partial p with respect to y is equal to partial q with respect to x. So that's one thing we know. But really what we would want is some rule so that if we're given some sort of arbitrary second order differential equation, we could have a test for exactness. But notice that an arbitrary second order differential equation of this form has a, has a pretty gnarly setup. Notice it looks something like this. So I'm just gonna use boxes for functions because we're not gonna go much more down this general path. We're gonna look at a special case. So it would be some function times y double prime, and that function could be of x and y. And then you could have some function times y prime squared from this bit right here. So that's kind of crazy. And then next you would have some function times y prime. And then let's see, you would have this thing right here, which is just, well, not connected to anything. It's just a function of x and y. So there, you've got another function of x and y. So all of these pink boxes just represent different functions of x and y. So that's the general shape of this differential equation. And then given this general shape, you would need to look at these coefficient functions and using the fact that they came from a first order differential equation, find some sort of rule that ties together all of these you know, coefficient functions. But I think that's like a little bit more than we wanna do right now. So what I'll do is look at a special case. So let's bring this down to our special case with which we can like solve a nice example. So our special case will be this. This is of the form d by dx 
a of x times y prime. So I'm like kind of switching the order up here. So in other words, our function q is simply a function of x, and I've renamed it a of x. And then plus the derivative with respect to x of, well, I'm gonna write this as b of x times y. So that equal to zero. So like I said before, well, let's spell this out. My function a of x is originally q, and then this function b of x times y is originally the p of x y. And note that we need partial p with respect to y to be partial q with respect to x. So for this to be exact in this case, well, what do we need? Well, we need the partial of p with respect to y, which is really just b of x in this case. So we'll need b of x to be equal to, well, the derivative of a with respect to x, because that's partial q, partial x. So in other words, a prime of x. So that's like our new exactness condition. But that being said, a class of functions like this is solvable even if this is not satisfied by maybe separation of variables techniques. And so that's actually what we'll look at and we'll take a second order differential equation to be exact. We'll use a loose definition here if it can be written in this form. Okay, so let's do that and then look at an example. Okay, so following our path that we've done so far, we'll have the following definition just for today. I wanna to underscore that. As we saw to look at more general exact second order differential equations, there's kind of a lot of work to it, which is probably a pretty good hint to why it's not covered in a standard first course for differential equations. Okay, so anyway, let's get into this. So we say a differential equation p of x y double prime plus q of x y prime plus r of x y is exact if it can be written as the total derivative of a of x times y prime plus the derivative of b of x times y equals zero. Okay, so let's look at a really simple example of this. So let's start with the following differential equation. We'll have e to the x y double prime um, and then plus 2x plus e to the x y prime and then plus x squared times y is equal to zero. So if we weren't thinking towards maybe this exactness condition, the second order differential equation might be like pretty hard to solve. We would need a trick. But since we you know, played around in that exact differential equation world and built up to this condition right here, it's really not so bad. So what we'll do is try to mold this into our condition. And we can do that as follows. Notice that this is equal to e to the x y double prime plus e to the x y prime and then plus 2x y prime plus x squared y equals zero. But those things in parentheses are clearly results of the product rule having been applied. So let's see, this first one looks like it was the product rule applied to e to the x times y prime. Whereas the second one looks like it's the product rule applied to x squared times y. But then by the linearity of the derivative, we have the derivative with respect to x of e to the x y prime plus x squared times y is equal to zero. But anytime a derivative of something is equal to zero, you know that that thing is equal to a constant. So in other words, we have e to the x y prime plus x squared times y is equal to some constant, maybe I'll call it c. And now we've got something called a first order linear differential equation. And to mold this into the right form, we need to multiply uh, this whole thing by e to the minus x. That'll give us y prime plus x squared times e to the minus x y plus c e to the minus x. And then, I mean, there's like a little bit of a trick here where you have to multiply by an integrating factor, or maybe there's like a shortcut to the closed form that involves maybe this function alpha. 
So let's set alpha of x equal to e to the antiderivative of this thing right here. So x squared e to the minus x. So actually, I'll go ahead and take that antiderivative kind of off screen. So just to reiterate, I'm taking the derivative of x squared e to the minus x. And you would do that using integration by parts. That gives you something like uh, minus x squared minus 2x minus 2 times e to the minus x. And then in the end, you get this nice solution, which is y equals 1 over alpha of x, where this is our alpha of x times some new constant, which maybe I'll call c naught. Oh, and I just realized that should have been an equal sign. And then plus the antiderivative of alpha of x times this function right here. So that's got a c attached and then e to the minus x dx. Okay, nice. So I think you can see that unless our original constant is something nice, this is like super gnarly. But that being said, um, we do have a closed form that just involves an integral where you can just deposit this alpha of x in here. And, you know, perhaps there is a path to finding a closed form for this integral, but that's not really the point of this video. The point was to highlight maybe a method of getting to the notion of a second order exact differential equation and show that moving towards that idea is extremely complicated. So let me know in the comments if your differential equations class covered second order exact differential equations, and that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button, subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you want to get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpinmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.